as your vice president for these eight years. And I want to thank Mr. President for his tireless devotion to keeping the flag family, to represent the greatness that this great, proud country has never ceased to continue becoming. I gladly accept the decision of the delegates, and most importantly you, the voters, to pick me as your candidate for vice president in November's election. <laughs> now, I want to make clear that a core tenet of my presidency, if you elect me, will always be to seek a path of peace and diplomacy. I want to cast your mind back to the tragedy of 9-11. While our hearts were bleeding, our brains got caught off guard. And in our desire for revenge, we allowed President Bush to lead us into an illegal war against the country and the people who played no part in the September 11 tragedy. We cannot allow fear and narrow-mindedness to, con to convince us that jumping into war is the first course of action. Now, I was deeply touched when I heard the story of Baru Muhammad born in the USA to refugees who grew up in Amaristan in the 80s after the country got caught up in the war in neighboring Afghanistan. She and her family played no part in the 9-11 attacks, yet they were subject to relentless abuse and harassment at the hands of ignorant racists under the false guise of patriotism. Now, I'm a patriot, first and foremost, but my version of patriotism means welcoming and protecting those who seek refuge in this great land. Barra became a prominent journalist and a tireless campaigner for Almari rights. And I welcome Almari people to this country just as I welcome Barra herself to the stage. <laughs> inviting me to the convention. My parents moved to the USA after their native Almaristan was ravaged by American soldiers. They moved here in the hope of finding peace and freedom. But our windows were regularly broken and death threats written on our door. My brother was assaulted and left in a ditch by racist thugs. Thankfully, he survived for the medical bills in this country have left my family destitute. My mother is sometimes too afraid to leave the house. When racist trolls tell me to go back home, I tell them this is my home. When they say I'm not white, I say neither are Native Americans. I see no reason why European Americans should feel they are owed this land, and Almari Americans are expected to feel grateful to the same European Americans for allowing us to live here. Sometimes I have to question whether my parents would have been safer staying back in Almaristan. Something, incidentally, which has been suggested to me on the street in far more aggressive terms on a regular basis my entire life. This country needs to change for the better. Just as Almaristan needs to change for the better, something it has been unable to do while under the thumb of an oppressive expansionist government and its neighbor, the Citadel Republic. It is my hope and belief that Alice Santaland is the person who can bring about that positive change. Under her, oh, okay. Um, thank you, everybody, and vote Alice. <laughs> okay, scratch everything I just said about Almaristan. I strongly condemn the Almaristani terrorist attacks. The Citadel Republic has the right to defend herself by any means whatsoever, and without question. Excuse me one moment. Sorry, what exactly is happening? So, some terrorists from your country. The USA. The Almaristan. Some Amaris broke into a school in the Citadel Republic and committed a massacre. Oh, 
Um, how many deaths? Uh, only 46. Only? Okay, you, you guys realize the Citadel president will react a thousand times as bad. Citadel has the right to defend herself. You need to talk to her, you need to stop her. Well, we can hardly reach out to a grieving people and urge them not to do anything rash. I know, but I, I just want to ask exactly when you urge restraint. Please, don't you have any power to influence? I am the Vice President of the United States of America. So, no. <laughs> Look, uh, we really appreciate you coming here today, and sorry it wasn't time for your full speech. We didn't invite her here. Yes, we did. No, we didn't invite her here. She uh, rushed onto the stage, a deranged protester, and started ranting. But I introduced her in my speech. Fine, we'll think of something else, but you need to denounce her as soon as possible. We are on the side of the Spinadels. Isn't it a little bit early to be declaring sides? They're not at war yet. Have you met the president of the Spinadel Republic? No. Yes, you have. She's not exactly the sit and wait type. What are the Spinadels like? Angry. But can you blame them being next door to Almeristan? No, but I mean, what are they actually like? Uh, Spinadel's a republic by name, although they've had the same president for 25 years. Uh, their history includes lots of wars over borders before eventually settling on a river as their western boundary and whatever Almeristan will allow as their eastern boundary. Their economy is largely based on exports of natural resources, uh, former Soviet territory until 1990, uh, generally European in outlook and culture. They're what? Just say they're what? Yes. They're white. Uh, one of them's in a Netflix show, uh, Hunky Guy, Alexander something, although he spells it weirdly with like three K's. <laughs> <laughs> three K's. <laughs> Not next to each other. <laughs> uh, he's actually just put out a statement on his socials condemning the attack. You follow Hunky Alexander? No, it was reshared by the Secretary of Defense. Okay, we need to respond. I already made a statement. You need to put out a written statement as well. And then raise the flag above the White House in solidarity and call Spindel President Elmira and promise we'll provide support. If she declares war. When she declares war. Okay, you are the candidate now. Any sense that you're not strong enough in supporting Spindel means the other guy wins. Okay, can we just take a breath and use our brains before we do anything rash? Citadel just declared war. We are already behind schedule. We are not behind schedule. I said in my speech we would support them. Uh, what did you mean when you said without question? That Citadel has the right to defend herself in any way whatsoever without question. I mean, I don't have to question whether or not the Citadels can defend themselves. What else could it mean? Well. It could be interpreted to mean that they'll defend themselves unquestioned. Like, we won't be monitoring them or questioning them. They can just do whatever they want. Well, obviously, I didn't mean that. Nobody would think I meant that. Would they? We'll just have to wait and see. President Almira. From one president to another, I want to offer our deepest condolences for the tragedy that your people have gone through. Thank you. It means very much. I've always appreciated this friendship between our countries. Yes, and I want to affirm in the strongest possible terms that our friendship is stronger now than ever. We wouldn't do anything to fracture the relationship between our two great nations. Sometimes the Soviet Republic gets forgotten about by the international community. We only make the news when a tragedy happens. Well, we wish it weren't so, but let us hope that from this tragedy we can find a way to peace. We've been fighting obvious terrorists for decades. With the latest attack, war became inevitable. Of course, we wouldn't expect you to react in any other way. You will always have our full diplomatic and military support. Thank you. I understand that you have an election coming up. I want to make sure that whoever wins will maintain a friendship and a view to support. Well, it won't be me, since we have term limits. My eight years are up. Is the American presidency like a prison sentence? No, no. <laughs> well... If this is the Republic, we can remain president 
but for as long as we keep getting elected by a limited right leader. Well, we have that for representatives uh, and senators. And Supreme Court judges are expected to stay on until they die. They don't even need to be elected. Yes, but judges are impartial. They don't have a political view, right? Uh, well... I am growing a concern about the democracy in your United States. The next president tells me that he will clean up politics and restore a true democracy. That guy's not going to be the next president. We have a brilliant candidate called Alice Santalan. She's been my vice president for the past eight years, and she'll do a brilliant job as my successor. And she supports the Spirit of Republic? Absolutely, without <coughs> question. Because if Alice Santalan doesn't support us, and the other candidate does, then of course we want him to be the president instead. I assure you we'll have your back all the way. Congress is voting on a bill to provide military support as soon as possible. You will win this war. The terrorists will lose. Good. Good safe. No attacks in their area yet. How are your grandparents? Similar, although I think they're a bit in denial. It's been happening their whole lives. They must be used to it by now. I'm unused to it. Yeah, by exactly. Now. They are so accustomed to airstrikes. They are just numb. We have to keep pushing back against this. Right. And hopefully, Alice becomes president and pushes for a ceasefire. Do you really think this is going to last that long? Three months. Yeah. Do you think she cares? She's better than me. Alternative. Uh, they are both warmongers. You know, I met her. She is so two-faced. Well, let us pray she acts with her good face then. Pray or, um, protest? Be careful, Bora. What? I'm not going to stop your activism. Just be careful what you say. Yeah, why? Do you think I'm careless? I think our employees would like to be seen as a bit more moderate than you would like. And what do you want to be seen I... as? I want to keep my job. So I can keep affording to pay rent, so I don't have to move back in with my parents, who, may I remind you, are now living in an active war zone. Yeah, fair point. But what are we doing in this country, in this city specifically, <clears throat> if not to make a positive change? Surviving. That's been my whole big dream whilst you were fantasizing about moving to DC to work in journalism. I, I was fantasizing that the bombs would stop. And they didn't, they just uh, got loud. I know, but we are in the same place, working for the same company. An enduring friendship. You have a voice, Bruce. Don't be timid with it. Our parents and grandparents won't be heard, but we will. We can talk, just be careful. Because money talks as well. And there is a lot of money to be made in war. Now, I want to start by condemning the attacks in the strongest possible terms. But as someone who grew up in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, I know just how easily people can rush to action without thinking. I want to urge restraint and remind people that punishing the perpetrators of the attacks should never involve harming civilians. These attacks didn't come from nowhere. The President of the Citadel Republic has been launching attacks and land grabs against the Almari people for decades, spurring people on to fight back. I am a pacifist, and I firmly believe that diplomacy is the only way of achieving peace between our two nations. But I can't ignore the conditions my people are forced to grow up in, and how this tension leads to violence. The Citadel President cannot be allowed to harm civilians. And the West should not turn a blind eye while the Citadel Army carries out massacres of unarmed civilians, uses sexual violence as a method of war, and pours chemical weapons, which have rightly been condemned in other conflicts, down upon an innocent populace. Please join me in putting pressure on the UN, USA, UK, EU, and every other global superpower 
in pulling funding and resources from the Citadel Republic until they call off this war. She's practically justifying terrorism. I know she has a point. Alice. Madam Vice President. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the terrorists have already been in prison. Won't the sensible course of action be to question them and figure out their motives so we can prevent a future attack? And not retaliate. Retaliation won't help. Really? Do you remember that staffer who keyed your car? Do you really want to commute her life sentence? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was justified. I mean, I probably saved hundreds of paintwork of hundreds of cars. But you're the one that said that this civil president's a maniac. I think you're confusing me with someone else. <laughs> There's no sound on the CCTV. Did you really think I bugged my own office? <laughs> the president is a loose cannon. She can't be trusted. I could have you turned into oatmeal for saying that. POTUS! We were talking about the Civil president. You're in the middle of an election campaign, and you're already bad enough in our closest ally. What would you do? Well, I can tell you I'm doing helping her. What? We just sent $2 billion worth of weapons to the Citadel Army. And you did that without consulting me, your vice president? I think you have a misunderstanding of what vice means. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? This is my house. In this way? Don't you have more important work to be doing? Yes, I have to ask you why you invited a terrorist on stage at the convention. She's not a terrorist. No! I don't care what you think. I don't care if you saw the video. We are not justifying her. We are not making excuses. You yourself said that we offer our support to the Citadels without question. Now, if this were Harvard Debate Club, I'm sure you'd spend hours arguing over the merits and flaws of Ms. Muhammad's latest YouTube. But we are running this country, and we need to know who our enemies are. Condemn her, or this will get even up. Hey, Bruce. I like your shirt. It's a merry rock. That's not going to work. Okay, it's like something Springsteen would wear. Really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. What era? Um. The, the middle one? Okay. I think you already know why you're here? No. There's an election coming up. I am well aware. And our independence as a newspaper depends upon press freedom and democracy. That's not going to happen if the other guy gets in. He's, he's got big scary plans to turn the media into his own on propaganda. We have to make sure he doesn't get re-elected. Yeah, okay, I know what that fascist wants. Oh, fascist is quite a strong word. That's why I used it. I'm quite a strong speaker. We have opinion columnists such as yourself always to hold those in power to account. We need the DC Telegraph to continuously make the case for freedom and democracy. Okay, I like democracy too, so what is your point? My point is we can't have anyone undermining Alice Sattelin's run for president. And when you say undermining... I mean, let's say it's almost to give a speech after it. No, 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 I did not specifically contradict what she just said. I did not know about the attacks when I gave that speech. That might make voters lose confidence in supporting her, and then she might lose the election. And then the other guy gets in, and he fires every civil servant and replaces them with, with his supporters. And all his lies are presented as truth. <laughs> and, and he criminalizes Germans and replaces it with propaganda. And then the USA becomes the, the new Soviet Union of Nazi North Korea. Is that what you want? Well, obviously not. So you see why you can't work with us anymore. What? You're one of our more radical writers, your criticism of the Civil Republic and support for Amaristan um, damages our no, no, no. relationships with our allies in Central Asia. So you are firing me for criticizing a genocidal uh, regime. That's not helping, is it? The G word, the R word? Uh, no, not, not that R word, the one you use. Regime, you're stoking a fire. I am reporting the truth. Civitals are reading from a massacre and you're submitting articles comparing them to the Soviets. And Stalin killed loads of Spitals, so that's extra intended. I am not denying the suffering of the Spitals, but it doesn't justify carrying out the same thing! We can't thing. call it the same. The president called it unprecedented. Okay, I am not the president, and you are not the president. And 
unique and unprecedented attack to which the spiritual president is apportioned any response. I don't agree with that. Well, he's the president, so by law we have to agree with his foreign policy. Yeah? What law? It's probably one of the amendments. Really? Uh, it can't be. It's the third amendment. Oh, um, no making soldiers stay in private homes during peacetime without the owner's consent. That third Where amendment? do you know that? Because I had to learn. Because if I don't know every facet of this nation's ridiculous and hypocritical history, no one takes me seriously as a journalist. Bruce, you know I do not have the luxury white American pundits have. See, everything you said is so political and provocative. <laughs> that is why I am a political journalist. <laughs> you were a political journalist. Fine. You know what? At least if you fire me, I won't have to live up to your nonsense of editorial standards anymore. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at John Webster. No, no. Do you know what it feels like to have someone correct every split infinitive or replace every preposition a sentence ends with? With which a sentence ends? <laughs> I became a journalist to make a difference, not to become a client of the state. Not every journalist is Glenn Greenwald investigating global surveillance. Sometimes you have to be the BuzzFeed editor and write about pantsuits that slay. <laughs> because Glenn Greenwald in 2013 eventually becomes Glenn Greenwald post 2020. So, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, no ending with prepositions, remember. What you mean to say is about what the hell talking <laughs> on which are you? Are we done? Here? You're done here. <laughs> that was the third sentence today. You ended with a preposition. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you all to the next president of the United States. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. We believe in the America that believes in us. And we will never stop fighting to prevent those un-American Americans who hate America from making America less like the America we love <laughs> and more like the hatred we hate because it has no place in our America. Running a country is never easy. Sometimes we have to compromise. I'm sure the president himself can tell me that. But where there is division, we will always strive to sow seeds of harmony. We must be united as Americans in spreading love. And that means standing up to bullies like my rival. And that means saying no to discrimination in all forms. And it means ensuring the Civil Republic receives 20 million US dollars in defense funding to fight back against the terrorists in Al Mar's Thank you. You've heard the reports, right? I hear everything. And does any of it sink in? Which reports? That 90% of the deaths so far in this conflict have been civilians. Civilian casualties are always an unfortunate side effect of war. 90%? Where have you heard the deaths in a war where over 90% of them are civilians? It was World War II. Two thirds. And it's widely regarded as the worst thing that could have happened in human history. Uh, the Rwandan civil wars in the 90s, as a percentage, and a day. <laughs> there is a reason people usually call it the Rwandan genocide. What's your point? My point is, you pushed me to go on stage and announce that we're giving money to potentially fund war crimes. What war crimes? The war crimes allegedly published by President Elmira. Allegedly. I said allegedly. And I repeated it. And if these allegations prove true, then we will act accordingly. The UN is investigating. They've been investigating the Democratic Republic of the Congo for 20 years. Look how good that's done. What is your plan? Just wait until Almira's done killing children? Then say what a shame nobody stopped it? They're targeting hospitals! Allegedly. We're running the most powerful country in the world. What is the point if we're not going to prevent bloodshed? I am running the most powerful country in the world. You are running for president. So why not listen to a two-term president, don't rock the boat, don't alienate our allies, and make sure you don't become a zero-term I want to make a difference. And 
and I can be diplomatic. I know how to strike the right balance. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Vara. How are you? Not great since you fired me a few hours ago. Can we not talk about work? Yeah, you know what? I can not talk about work since I'm out of a job now. Working for a big newspaper like the DC Telegraph is a privilege, not a right. And that privilege comes from being related to the editor. They're not all related to him. Half the office has the same surname. Lots of people are called Smith. They're not all related. Oh, but they are all white people. Some white guys are good at that job. Yeah, and all the rest of them work with you at the DC Telegraph. <laughs> you don't have to be bitter now that you've lost your job. Well, I'm going to choose to be anyway. You have a chip on your shoulder. You always wanted to be the radical outside, and now you get to be on the outside. You know they are never going to accept you. This is going to be some anti-establishment. No, no, the mass. establishment is not going to start seeing you as white just because you <laughs> suck up to the status quo. Well, I don't suck up to anyone. I'm Bruce. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look pleased with that. It's a pun. It's not a good pun. That's what they call Bruce Spencer. I know. And I'm called You're Bruce. You're not called Bruce. <laughs> called Bruce. You are called Basif Mabedij. That is what your mom calls you. I'm Bruce! <laughs> Do you really think you would have got that scholarship to Yale if your application just said Bruce? To you, Dara! <laughs> I'm the one who got fired today. Brief me, Tony. Okay. Uh, there are 14 progressives in Congress who say they're withholding from endorsing you until you formally denounce the Citadel Republic. The usual suspects, I'm guessing. Indeed. And there are a few major lobbying groups who say they'll pull funding if you say anything negative about the Citadel Republic. <laughs> so you're telling me that I'm going to have to choose between a bunch of hippies Crossing their arms and huge organizations willing to fund my campaign. Yeah, it really is the money of the people. <laughs> oh no, don't say it like that. It sounds bad. The uh, Coalition of Queers for Change have denounced the actions of Citadel President Elmira. They're calling for free and fair elections overseen by the UN. Why do the queers care about Elmira stand? Gay people are persecuted there. Well, in their words, governments discriminate, but bombs don't. <laughs> I've heard better slogans. Mm -hmm. Any other news? There's also an exclusive that's just come through from the DC Telegraph. Go on. Look, I, I know we have a no work rule at home. All right, <laughs> I'm not going to help you get your job back. Yeah, but I thought I should just say congratulations on your promotion. How did you find out? LinkedIn. They practically live on there these days. Thank you, although technically it's not a promotion. I'm just going from editing opinion pieces to active reporting. That sounds like a promotion. I mean, or it could be a way for them to stop you voicing your opinion, but don't worry about it. Uh, let's get to work. Some of us have jobs. Okay, your job starts in two hours. I have emails to check. Which you can check on your phone that I know you've already done this morning. What makes you think that? Because I know you, and I know you're the best person to break a news story. You have an exclusive? Yes. Okay. I'm running for president. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to vote for you to be the next president? <laughs> I'm a very influential activist. That's an admirable thing to 10% of the population. The other 90%, that means unemployed comic. I only need 10% to make a difference. 8% of a population is enough to cause a revolution. Well, you need about 50% to be president. Do you know how often a president has become elected okay. without, without a majority? 19 times. You're not going to be president of Boris. I am already polling at 1.5%. If I run a good campaign, that will increase. And I already have connections with the most influential activists, academics, and journalists in this city. And what about the rest of the country? Well, I'll just have to win them over. Do you know no one had heard of Bernie Sanders outside of Vermont before he ran? And what about um, Jill Stein or Shirley Chisholm or Eugene B. Debs? You're just naming people who not only didn't become president, but weren't even runners up. None of, those, none of those names got over 5% in the election. Well, except Debs in 1912, he, he 
He got six percent. <laughs> why run, Boran? Why run this late? Because if I don't run, there won't be another candidate who wants to end this war. Please. Come to the office with me. Let's make a splash. Born to run? Borrow Mohammed and Nazis a presidential campaign. She was polling at a hypothetical 1.5% before she announced she was running. 1.5% is not going to elect the next president. The same poll put you behind by 1%. That doesn't mean the other guy will win. We have the Electoral College. To win, you don't need a majority. You just need the big states. And the usual suspects will vote the usual way. The swing states are vital when you're polling this badly. The president has endorsed me. Our guys in Congress have endorsed me. I represent the continuation of the last eight years. Not everyone's been happy with the last eight years. I mean, the past four have been a stalemate. That's because we lost control of the Senate. And we could lose control of the presidency if we aren't stronger. So what do you suggest we do? Change track? Just be stronger. Mm. Be bolder. Because mm. right now you're mm. weak. Vulnerable, insecure, unreliable, flimsy. Do you want to end up in the same cell as lady who keep my car? So what do the swing states want? They want me to lead them. They want to look up proudly and see this girl boss taking no nonsense. Jobs, they want jobs. <laughs> what jobs can we offer? If you're pulling poorly in Virginia, uh, there are Flying people change their minds on a whim. But it's home to some of the nation's biggest arms manufacturers. No. No. I will not run my campaign as a warmonger. Why not? The current police has run loads of wars. But you didn't start them. Well, you didn't end them. There are cities across Virginia which rely on those factories to survive. You don't want to plunge families into poverty, do you? Of course not. Then you need to go there. And promise there will always be wars with food on the table. <laughs> and that will ensure that I win? Alice, nothing will ensure a win, but you go there and you shake hands with those Appalachian rednecks. You put on your biggest smile, because it's better to meet with the people who are currently indifferent to you than the ones who hate you. And that means I wouldn't have to meet Barbara again? No, <laughs> not unless things are looking really desperate. <laughs> Barbara, great to see you! I'm sure you were surprised to be invited here. Not really, you're pulling badly and I'm your main competitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it you want? Foreign second transport? You're certainly not getting VP. Not unless you start polling higher and then we'll talk. You know, I know everyone else around here is playing some sort of power pink mahjong, but some of us get into politics because we have principles, not ambitions. Right. You do realize that when people run to become president is in the hope that they actually become president? And you can't be president. The only two people who can realistically win is me or the other guy. And I really hope you don't want the other guy to win. Don't you find it so disturbing that we have this two-party system when most of the world can vote for parties they actually want? Most countries aren't America. Well, like 35 countries are. No. Like America, the USA, the America people love. <laughs> you know, if you leave this country, you'll find most people don't like us. And most political systems are more effective than ours. Do you really think that? Mm. In the UK, the Prime Minister picks a bunch of old guys sitting in the upper house, and they're literally there until they die. That happens here too. <laughs> That's a logistical failure, not a constitutional design flaw. And in the Netherlands, they spend a whole year trying to figure out the makeup of their government through uncomfortable coalitions. And we have lame duck governments that last two or more years. Well, in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Iceland's pretty perfect. The point is, we're not in Iceland. <laughs> Sorry, is this um, really the best use of your time? Don't you have an election to lose? You. You really think I'll lose? Uh, everyone does. 
and you're okay staying in this election knowing fully well that if you do, the other guy will win? You know, if you lose this election, you cannot blame it on me. Oh, but I can. You see, you're way to the left of me, and the other guy is way to the right. I am a moderate, which means any votes that you gained were stolen from me. Unless, of course, the extreme voters on the right somehow magically jumped over me and landed on your side of the spectrum. I am not stealing your votes. You are failing to earn them. The people voting for me would otherwise be sitting at home, but I am giving them a reason to go to the polls. You know, in a democracy, there should be a range of opinions. Really? Yeah. Even the extreme voters on the right? They would gladly shoot you and every other brown person in America. Whereas I invited you on stage. Can you not see the difference in our views? Not clearly enough. When it comes to the war in our song, you guys are on the same page. If you were president, what would you do? I would immediately stop selling weapons to the Spitadel Republic. Really? And let her neighbors invade, leave her defenseless? You know, if you stop selling weapons to them right now, they would still have more than enough defense to last them the next century, but they would use it more sparingly. Defense cannot mean offense. Bara, it is very simple. If you don't drop out of this election, the other guy wins, and this war turns nuclear. We can't allow that to happen. So if you're really against him, you'll vote for me and get all your supporters to vote for me too. Then Alice, there is the problem. You are not offering anything. Currently, you are running on a platform of, oh, I, I know the other guy, and it is not working. You need to give people something to vote for, not just against. They can vote for the other guy losing. <laughs> <laughs> that is not enough for me or for voters. You mean the 10% of voters who actually care about this war? The single issue voters? The voters who change their minds once you give them the one thing they want? Yeah, that 10% that you need to win. <clears throat> Stop me with radicals. It's not a good one. Is she still a radical if she's pulling at 10%? The other guy was pulling 43%, and he's a lunatic. Popularity doesn't count for anything. It does in an election. Speaking of which, how have you taken the majority I won last time and turned it into a too close to call? Don't act like you're so beloved. You lost the Senate. But I won the presidency, and it helped that I wasn't making enemies left, right, and center. You were merely making enemies left and right. Have you ever met President Elmira? No. Yes, you have. Uh, tell me, please. <laughs> 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 President Elmira is unhinged. unhinged. Doesn't know what she's going to do from one minute to the next, and she loves guns more than Texans. I love guns more than I love Texans, and I hate guns. <laughs> <laughs> I have no confidence that Elmira is the right person to run the spit at Elmira. But if I say that publicly, we have a new enemy in Asia. And at that point, it's a continent of four billion people who want us dead. Don't alienate our allies. What is the point of being the most powerful person in the world if you're not going to do anything with that power? Alice, you seem to be forgetting that five years ago, after three years of congressional violence and agonizing debates, we managed to pass a major piece of legislation to regulate the licensing of tarmac contracts to some of the nation's large suppliers of highway infrastructure materials. Don't tell me that that's nothing. Tony, please come back in. Did you hear what we were saying out there? Uh, about Omira's mental state? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, why do you have that look like you're about to give us some bad news? Get used to it. I've seen that look every day for eight years. <laughs> uh, protesters allied to Barra have occupied the New York City's public library's main branch. They're refusing to leave until there's a ceasefire. Can the librarians get them out? Most of the librarians are actually part of the protest. <laughs> <laughs> Even the hippie has out. Thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, no problem. You know, the vice president's very much a, a modern politician, and it's great to connect with them. Regular folk. 
Uh, absolutely. Um, this feature will give a very clear portrait of her home life and the actual ruler's president. Well, we trust in the DC Telegraph as a beacon of quality journalism. <laughs> and, and we hope you'll uphold the integrity we've come to expect. Of course. But if you were to write something which we didn't consider to be truthful, well, then that would uh, damage our trust. Uh, well, we only print the truth. So if your article was inaccurate in any way, well, then we'd have to think twice about offering these opportunities to the DC Telegraph in the future. And <laughs> wouldn't be a good look for the new guy to be the reason the future president won't talk to your paper, would it? Understood. Bruce, how wonderful to see you! <laughs> Welcome to Mikasa! Oh, uh, that means my house. Uh, I know what it means. <laughs> well, yeah, just make sure you print it in English. <laughs> <laughs> this is my kitchen where I prepare food for my family, because as you know, it's important to provide. So, uh, you like to cook? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But it's important that, you know, women aren't expected to do all the cooking in the household. It's important that there's balance. Women shouldn't be in the kitchen. Uh, well, actually... A woman's place is in the kitchen? Not quite. Women belong wherever they want to be. Go wherever they want to go. <laughs> do whatever they want to do. Within legal limits. You know, sometimes dictaphones don't pick up the vice president, right? So just make sure you type this up clearly and coherently so readers don't misunderstand you. Uh, so, uh, what kind of food do you like to cook? I cook a meat beef burger meal. Oh, no, don't say beef. It's bad for the environment. We can't afford to lose a green boat. <laughs> pork? Christ, no, don't say pork. <laughs> How about I say something vegetarian? It's healthy. Mmm, and alienate the Midwest farmers we need to win? People farm vegetables. Everyone eats vegetables. It's a win-win. Yeah, in California. Those vegans are already team allies. I uh, say chicken. I don't like chicken. I like venison. No, venison's a weird choice. It sounds like you eat roadkill and have worms. <laughs> well, I don't. Would you want to spend the rest of your campaign telling reporters I don't eat roadkill? <laughs> Just say chicken. Chicken! <laughs> I love cooking. I call Kova. Did you get that? Chicken? Yeah. Chicken. <laughs> she likes barbecue wings. Uh, so, what was it like being the first person in your family to go to Harvard? It was tough. It was a real culture shock. You see, my parents, they were a different generation. They had different approaches to the world of, of work and education. They went to Stanford. <laughs> can I ask about the Armistan protests? Do you think you can? I aim to be an open book. Ask away. Have the protests against President Elmira in the USA, Swedish Republic, and Armistan done anything to dampen your commitment to supply weapons to the Swedish you know, the Vice President has always been and will always be on the side of the Citadels. Tony, I am on the side of peace. You can print that. I respect anyone who stands up for what they believe in. Uh, no, you can't say that. Lots of people stand up for what they believe in. <laughs> the microcomputing magnate who tried to send you a, a, a pipe bomb because he said he raised taxes. Wasn't he standing up for what he believed in? Fine. But people have voices that deserve to be heard, and honestly, it's getting harder to ignore them. Then you need to work harder to ignore them. So, to answer the question... I'm actually not going to answer the question. Um, ask something about uh, TV, or, or sports. I think the readers would rather hear about the Armistad situation. She said she stands firm with the Citadel Republic. I didn't say that. You did say that, when the attacks happened. You're not going to dishonor those victims now, are you? Well, circumstances have changed. There is evidence that the Citadel Army is intentionally targeting civilians using torture and sexual violence in direct contradiction to the Geneva Convention. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl, Alice? I know you support the Twin City Cowboys. That's not even a real What's thing. your favorite novel? <laughs> Who just found your lawn ornaments? Have you ever had a really good apple? Why am I doing your job for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
not some client journalist. I'm here to ask questions. This is a feature for the lifestyle section of your magazine. <laughs> Newspaper. Okay, this is not a police interview. Honestly, I just like a single line or two about the protest. I really think that's what voters want to hear. They don't tell us what the voters want. We know what the voters want. Not according to opinion polls. Goodbye, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, Americans, for inviting me here. It is desperately needed to manage oil in this time of crisis. Our homes are being destroyed by an enemy invader. Much like your country is being overrun by these Mexicans, I really talk so much about <laughs> We need your support. We need you to stay strong with us. And we need your libraries to be free of Muslim protesters. <laughs> your country has grown weak, afraid. We spirituals are not woke. When you beat us down, we come back stronger. When you laugh at us, we make you cry instead. When you punch us, we punch back twice as hard. And when a terrorist kills one of us, we kill the terrorist! It's a terrible tragedy. We have nothing to provoke it. It's an unforgivable attack. We prescribe the perpetrators as terrorists and everyone involved in the plan. And the family? Yes, of course. Well, we can always assume. You see, we value life very highly. Of course. Our life. The Amaris, they don't really care about life. They have big families, so if one dies, no one's really sad. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're families. Alice, I believe you want to let President Elmira know that we we're the first country to raise the Spitadel flag after the tragedy happened. Thank you. Yes, we feel a real kinship with your people. One of them is in a Netflix show. <laughs> I don't really care about Netflix. Too much propaganda. Oh, right. Well, we have other networks. All American television is full of propaganda. Loads of forced diversity. We actually view diversity as a strength. Every time I switch on the hotel television, there is a movie or show about slavery. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> but if you never had slavery, you would have become such a prosperous nation which leads the world. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to debate the merits of slavery. Well, what we wanted to discuss is... Alice? Is the need to eliminate every terrorist in our Maristan. Yes, that's our goal. Exactly. We want to be certain that every effort is taken to precisely target every terrorist location. That's why we need your bombs. We can provide more bombs. We just want to be sure that every effort is taken to minimize civilian casualties. We always avoid civilians. But if civilians get in the way of our bombs, that's hardly our fault. <laughs> you see, children these days are very intuitive. If they hear the sound of falling bombs, they know not to come to school today. <laughs> we mustn't forget the place of school as a place of learning and safety. And if they do go to school, well, that's Darwin's fault, not mine. Spend more time looking up and less time looking down at your iPhone. Oh gosh. Let's <laughs> give it him or skip it down the air raid shelter. <laughs> Polis, might I have a word? Uh, yes, I should finish signing some paperwork and I'll be right back. Polis! Now. <laughs> we don't like this disrespect in the Spirit of Republic. Do something about it. We cannot support her. Alice, you need to listen to what I said about Alice. No, you need to listen to me. Being president has to mean more than winning elections. How do you think somebody becomes president? Well, in Elmira's case, it's about postponing elections until she's polling well. That's just good diplomacy. You have been president for the last eight years, and what have you actually done? What is the point of being president if you're not going to do anything? You want the cycle from four years ago to be president, or the one before that, who promised to evade Arrakis? 
What are you offering other than not being the other God? Would you rather I were one of the other gods? I would rather we stop oscillating between going backwards and staying still. The rest of the world has good health care while we're worshipping a piece of paper with a signature of some dead racist. That is our constitution. I could have you put in prison for disrespecting it. Not for long. Hey. Hey, how is interviewing a war criminal? She's not a war criminal. Not yet. Wait until she's in power. That woman will not change anything. I thought you were trying to block her path. Your whole campaign has been twisting her arm until she gives in. Oh, yeah, that's a good way. Why are you helping me? Do you consider me a friend? <clears throat> Well, we were friends. What happened? Uh, you changed. Change is a good thing. That's your whole shtick. What kind of revolutionary supports the status quo? You know, you were a radical too once. There's a limit to how radical I can be without being deported. You know, I do admire you. No, that's the wrong word. What? Respected? Revered? Begrudged. Because. You told people you're Amar Stani, but they're not. I'm just as Almari as you. But not Amar Stani, you're an ethnic Almari. But you weren't, you know, you didn't grow up there. You're American. Try telling that to everyone on Twitter. <laughs> well, stop using Twitter for a start. You know I am Almari American. Without a hyphen. What? That's how we punctuate it. Robert De Niro is Italian American. His dad is Italian American. His granddad, Henry De Niro, was Italian hyphen American, dual nationality. His great grandparents were actual Italians, born and raised in Italy. But there's four whole generations from Antonio Mercurio Ferrazzano to Bob Jr. in New York. So I'm not far enough to count now. You're not far enough to call yourself an immigrant. You know, as someone who was born and raised here, mud sticks. In this country, if your great granddad was Irish and the rest of your family were a good little wasps, you are still considered a dirty mick immigrant to the majority. And that's the majority you hope to win over to the leftist cause. No, I want peace in our ancestral homeland. And as many people that can join that cause, the better. But no, I'm not about to appeal to racists. It is not my job <laughs> to grow their moral compass. You get to have your cake and eat it too. I didn't know that expression when I met you. Someone used you as a reference point to teach me that. <laughs> you said you'd run for president one day, and I didn't doubt it. But I'm not even allowed to run for president, even if I gain citizenship, because I wasn't born on this, this, this land. So you get to run your mouth with, with no consequences. I'm trying to fit in. Yet you shame me for gaining the acceptance you've been afforded from birth. You know, I have never been accepted here. Oh, you, you, you don't want to put a card down there? No, you don't want to put a card down there. You can't win now. By the way, you know, if this was back home in Almaris time, they'd have you exiled from the community for doing that. They actually take this game very <laughs> seriously there, which you'd know if you were from Almaris time. Mm. You know, you can sneer at the diaspora all you want, but we are making a difference, standing up for ourselves and all our rights. Because you have that privilege. I do admire you. But we can't appeal to their sense of empathy if they don't see us as humans. I got my picture taken today with the possible next American president. It's not running for president, but it shows people what, what an Al Marastani looks like. It normalizes our existence. Okay, well, what would you do if you're in my shoes? I'll never be in your shoes because I'll never be born American. Well, just imagine you were. Why? If I was born and raised here, I'd be a totally different person. What will you do since you are in your shoes? Well, I don't want the other guy to win, so I am going to drop out. And what will your supporters do? Well, they'll vote for Alice, I hope. Are you 
And you're going to endorse her. You know, if I do that, all my supporters will call me a sellout and never trust me again. What kind of activist endorses the opposition without getting any of their demands? Your demands may be closer to being met than you think. Just keep your ears out for a call. And we're done. I pride myself on being someone who listens to evidence, who learns and grows as time goes on. And whilst I can't exactly encourage the actions your supporters have taken in erstwhile instances of education across the country, <coughs> they have raised awareness of a very important issue. Yeah, the Amar Sun genocide. Ah, ah, ah. There's that G word we don't like. The escalated situation in Amar Sun is one that I want to address. And one of my priorities as president will be to put pressure on Almira to end the war and ensure lasting peace. Oh, good luck with that. I thought you'd be more welcoming to the idea. That's been the whole point of these protests, right? Yes. But we also need a warrant issued for Amir's arrest. That would be stoking a fire we wouldn't want to wake. I think you're merging metaphors. Here's what I'm proposing. End your presidential campaign. Well, of course you want that. And get all your supporters to vote for me. We can't assume they will. And in return, I'll do everything in my power to end the war. And arrest Almira and finally end the colonial project and that make is you America my vice president. You're serious? You want it in writing? Tony. Um, this, this doesn't offer any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> that is a non-disclosure agreement. The closest thing you can ever get to a promise in American politics. <laughs> but, but you want me as your VP? Yes. The election is soon and I don't have a right in me. It's all anyone's talking about. Well, oh, then our protests. This is the perfect synthesis. Clara, I agree with you. The war must end. Together, we can make history. Okay, but what if my supporters don't vote for you? You need to encourage them to. If you want BP, you're going to have to campaign like hell. Tony, what's the decision by prediction? Uh, you're on 42%. Mm -hmm. The other guy's on 43%. And Barra here is on 10%. And then some people are going for the Joe candidates, like Vermin Supreme or the Libertarians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So if one-fifth of your supporters vote for me, we win. If two-thirds of your supporters vote for me, we win comfortably. Now, I know not everyone's going to be on board, and that's okay. They don't have to be. The question is, are you on board? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Tony, drop the press release. Yeah, it's, uh, it's already in my email oh, draft. Should I press send? We are really going to stop the genocide. As uh, I'm not my money mate, you need to stop using the G word. But war is fine. Well, war is not fine, but you know what I mean. Yeah, there's a training course we'll put you on. Uh, what to say, how to behave, interacting with the press, and we can get someone to do a deep cleanse of your social media to delete anything controversial. Mm -hmm. And the campus protests have to end immediately. No more occupying libraries and administrative buildings. You've won. They can pack up their tents. Yeah, but you can't suggest in any way that the protests led to this policy change. <laughs> From a PR perspective, mm -hmm. you don't want to legitimize such an extreme form of protest. <laughs> yes. And whilst we can encourage President Elmira to call an election, we can't force her hand. It has to be her decision. But she is now the enemy. She's not an enemy. She's an ally. But 
It would be good to have a new ally in the big chair. Yeah, I, I also noticed that you're involved in some campaigns that boycott some major beverage corporations, and we can't have that. Because no. then we're creating tension with those representatives who receive funding from those corporations. Or the areas where factories are major employers. Thank you. Sorry, you know what? I, 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 I can't. I can't be your VP. Mara, think carefully about this. You don't want the other guy to win. No, no. I don't. So, I am quitting the race. And I am going to endorse you. And I, I am going to fight like hell to make sure you win. But Alice, that is only so that you start to fix some of the mess this country is in and what Andy is responsible for. But the second you win, my pushback will begin. Now every action you take will be scrutinized by me and a million other activists because if we don't hold you accountable, who will? The people. The very premise this nation is fine. Alice, we are the people. And what the hell is this? I cannot promise to stop questioning you. And I certainly can't promise other activists will stop questioning you. Because if you don't stick flawlessly to the principles of democracy and human rights, you need to be questioned. You need that fear of disruption to keep you in line. We don't live in a perfect world, Barra. Compromise is a part of party politics. And I am not a part of party politics. I am my own activist. And Alice, I really want you to be a great president. One who doesn't crumble and compromise as a way to avoid making difficult decisions. One who is at the mercy of her actual citizens. One who yet has the establishment in one ear, but a much louder populace in the other. I have no choice but to make sure I fight like hell to make even more sure that you win. But you will be hearing objections from me at any wrong turn for the next four years. Get yourself a VP who can be your yes man. I will be there to be the one to say no. I look forward to fighting with you. <laughs> Thank you.